Did the intellectual dark web morph into becoming MAGA? That's this concept that I'm going to be diving into a little bit today on the show. Okay, welcome to Cylinder Radio. I'm your host, Will Roosh, high school teacher in Los Angeles, bringing viewpoint diversity to the podcast world and specifically in education. And the history of this podcast and my uh, social media on, on Instagram, I started my Instagram in May of 2018. And then I started my podcast in January of 2019. I was really inspired by this group of people that got labeled the intellectual dark web. Uh, it started with, uh, I had a long commute and I was listening to Joe Rogan's podcast because I like hunting and muscle cars and martial arts and you know, all the stuff that they you know that, that he's into. So I was like, you know, comedy. So I was like, Oh, this will be an easy thing for my commute. And that turned into being, you know, the JRE. So I started listening in like 2014 or something like that. But then he started bringing on all these people like Brett Weinstein, um, and, uh, and, and Jordan Peterson and Sam Harris and these people that, you know, were, were seeing things in like the, whatever the woke, kind of culture going on in the world. And I was like, I see this in education. I'm seeing this. So I started talking about it in class. And then uh, I was encouraged by my wife to start an Instagram account and a podcast to talk about viewpoint diversity and the importance of viewpoint diversity. This like this idea of viewpoint diversity was not on my radar until the intellectual dark web. So I was really inspired by the individuals of the intellectual dark web. I've been so benefit um, so blessed to be able to have had interactions with nearly all of them. I've been on zoom calls with, with Brett Weinstein. I've had lots of conversations, both public and private with Eric Weinstein. I talked to Joe Rogan about all kinds of stuff, uh, back in the jujitsu days when I, you know, sit with him at tournaments and stuff like that. Uh, but, um, but then I worked with John Height at, uh, at heterodox Academy. You know, there's a lot of people that, that I've been able to kind of pick their brains on certain things. You know, I, I met and had a long conversation with, um, Ben Shapiro who, you know, advised me on, on how to structure my civics class. My civics class is now available on, uh, on Patterdox. Uh, so, so not just to name drop, but just to say like, you know, this has been a big, a big, like, uh, motivator and, you know, uh, a catalyst for me kind of going down this, this road of viewpoint diversity and all the things that I've been doing. Uh, but, this 2024 election now has has brought a lot of people from the intellectual dark web to support Donald Trump, including people who haven't before. So Joe Rogan famously said he didn't want to humanize Donald Trump, so he's not going to bring him on the podcast. And then he brought him on the podcast, and that seemed to have you know at least some sort of of impact on what was going on. But then other people in the intellectual dark web, you know, is Dave Rubin. I've done a video on Dave Rubin before. Dave Rubin really transferred from one like partisan ideology over to the other. So he's just all in on conservatism. Now, I don't think, I think he was always just someone with a platform. I don't think he was one of the intellectuals of the intellectual dark web. He was just someone who platformed people um, early on who weren't getting a platform many places. And, you know, I thought I learned a lot from Dave Rubin during that time, but now I kind of see him just as like, you know, towing the party line, not, which is kind of the opposite of, of what the intellectual dark web and heterodox thinking was all about. Uh, but then Brett Weinstein, Brett Weinstein is an interesting person because you could say that the political movement of the IDW, uh, uh, was, was unity 2020. And in, in 2020 election, uh, you know, he set up this whole structure to basically recruit people into, um, being, you know, running for president and they would do like a two year as, as president and vice president. And then they would switch one person from the left, one person from the right. I think the people that won it were Tulsi Gabbard and Dan Crenshaw. It might've been Admiral McRaven as well. The Navy SEAL Admiral. I'm not sure. Um, but that was clearly like the political move, uh, of, of the, uh, intellectual dark web. And then, uh, more recently it became the, um, was it rescue the Republic? So we had a big get together at the Lincoln Memorial, the rescue the Republic, which was Brett Weinstein organizing with Heather Hying and, uh, and RFK jr. And, and, uh, and those people, um, by the way, I kind of just glanced over, sorry, but like, like, uh, the intellectual dark web was, it was off of a, um, a May, 2018 Barry Weiss article and Barry Weiss was still writing for the New York times about this, these people that were very different in their, in their stances on things, but all agreed on certain things. So, uh, the intellectual dark web 
was an informal network of public intellectuals, commentators, and media figures who promoted open dialogue, often critiqued mainstream culture, political and academic narratives. Uh, the, the term was, was coined by Eric Weinstein. Eric Weinstein, it, you know, likes all those kinds of like, um, kind of like underground kind of uh, like ideas being pushed and he likes to label things in ways that are easy, easy to understand. So he coined that, that term, but uh, IDW, the intellectual dark web people were really committed to things like um, free inquiry, skepticism, um, especially when it comes to mainstream narratives. So basically like asking questions, pushing back, and you would have people who were like very left, like Brett Weinstein was a Birkenstock wearing, you know, Bernie Sanders supporting bike riding college professor. You know, he was like a very left guy, but then also Ben Shapiro, who was very right wing. were kind of in this together. There was Sam Harris, who's very left wing, you know, um, a lot of them are actually very left, but then there's Dave Rubin, who's like more right. So, uh, it was interesting because the rescue the Republic people, uh, a lot of them went over to Trump. And it's because Bobby Kennedy went over to Trump. I wouldn't have voted for Trump personally if Tulsi Goward and Robert Kennedy Jr. didn't go over to Trump. I would have voted for Robert Kennedy Jr., you know, here in California. But when they went over there, I kind of you know, went over with him. And it's interesting how many people said that they're voting for Trump. Brett Weinstein said he's voting for Trump. Peter Bogosian is voting for Trump. Eric Weinstein wasn't clear about that. I think he might have sat, sat it out, but he definitely wasn't on the side of Kamala Harris. You know, the only one that I can think of that voted for Kamala Harris was Sam Harris. Now, Sam Harris, uh, who, you know, making sense is the name of his podcast. I think that it's pretty obvious that he suffers from Trump derangement syndrome. Uh, I think that his clear thinking is, is out the window when it comes to Trump. And I think there's, there's been examples of him saying things that just didn't make sense about, you know, he didn't care if Joe Biden or Hunter Biden had like piles of ch dead children in his house, he would still vote for, for Biden, like weird stuff like that, just to try and prove a point. But I think he's a clear thinker in a lot of ways. And I think he's unclear especially in it's other ways, especially when it comes to Trump. Um, but other than him, who's kind of been like, you know, different than, than all of the other people, you know, Dave Rubin, Ben Shapiro, two conservatives, obviously they would, they would vote for Donald Trump, but then Brett Weinstein, who I, you know, might get labeled a conservative, but doesn't really, isn't really built that way. Voting for Trump, Joe Rogan, who gets also labeled a conservative, but you know, has always been of, of the left voting for Trump. Uh, it's, it's, it's really, um, something that I just want to like kind of pick apart. Like what would it be about Trump? Cause intellectual, you know, free inquiry, like open inquiry, like that's not really a Trump thing, but what is it about Trump? I think it was his commitment to free speech right after he won the election, the president elect. Now he, uh, put out a video of the commitment to freedom of speech. That is what the intellectual dark web was all about. Okay. Uh, the issues around censorship, the, the call of Kamala Harris to say that all social media companies have to have the same rules about, about what you can post and what you can't, you know, Twitter can't have their own set of rules. It's like, yes, they can. They're a private company. Of course they can. Of course, you know, the release of the Twitter files about how the Biden administration was covering up issues with regard to COVID. Um, you know, uh, Kamala Harris is, has done things like she's used pronouns. You know, I'm Kamala Harris. Uh, my pronouns are she, her, I'm a woman in a blue dress or something like that. She's, she said that, you know, before, like that's the kind of stuff that, uh, the in intellectual dark web talked about, you know, they were pushing back on wokeness, not because social justice in and of itself is bad, but because it doesn't allow open inquiry. That's what it's all about. It's we get to the best answers. We get to the best policies. We get to the best ideas through dialogue. So we have a dialogue with people that we disagree with. I mean, this is something that is fundamental to everything that I am about as an educator, everything I'm about with my channels. It's what I do on Patterdox with my students. It's what I do in the Patterdox round table. You can go to patterdox.com slash round table, where I am having uh, a telegram channel and zoom meetings with people who are very differently minded coming together to have open inquiry and respectful conversations. I'm just all about that. And I think that uh, the evidence was showing that Kamala Harris and whatever kind of machine is, is behind her would be less open to that and more for censoring what could be deemed as dangerous hate speech, you know, bad speech. You know, um, I think it's that. And I think it's also an element of Kamala Harris, just not 
you can't really like see her like Trump, you know, kind of what Trump is, but like, but like him or hate him, but like Kamala Harris, you don't really know exactly who she is, like what she's all about. She's just so such a politician. It's hard to get like a grab on that, like that, like human element of her. So I think that is definitely a part of it as well. But you know, whatever party, cause the IDW is always nonpartisan, but whatever party would be more for uh, open inquiry and dialogue and um, viewpoint diversity, I think that is where people go. So I'm not saying that the the intellectual dark web like is now just MAGA, but I think that the principles that steer people who are aligned with the ideas of intellectual dark web are going to be more likely going for Trump. And that's that's what I what I've been seeing. But I'm very curious. I haven't seen anyone talk about this idea yet. So please in the comments share what are your thoughts about the intellectual dark web for you like old school intellectual dark web people and kind of the shift of many of them to come over to Donald Trump and MAGA and supporting, you know, I think Tulsi Gabbard was, was like the, the, one of the politicians for the, the IDW and she's on Trump train now, you know, I think a lot of these ideas. So we'd love to hear your thoughts on this one. Uh, drop your comments, uh, especially in the, on the YouTube channel about what you're, what, what you, what you think about this and, uh, maybe poke holes in this idea. But I thought of this last night. I was like, ah, oh, let me put this out here on a podcast and see what people have to say. So, uh, if you are committed to, open inquiry and dialogue. And you want to talk to people who are differently minded, who have different political stances and stuff, but you want to have a dialogue where you're not going to be shouted at. You're not going to be told that you're a bad person because you think this way. Please check out the Patterdox Roundtable. As it grows, it gets really, really interesting. Experts from all over the place can come and have a conversation. And uh, and I learn a lot. And I think the people there learn a lot. It really humanizes uh, individuals. And you just can't do that on a traditional social media uh you know, platform. So I would love for you to join that patterdocs.com slash round table. If you have any questions, you can reach out to me at uh, contact at patterdocs.com. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate you. Let me know your thoughts.